What's going on guys? So today I'm uh, sharing an eBay lot that I won. This was something that uh, was a little impulsive and uh, definitely off the beaten path for me and what I do on eBay. Um, and it was a total miss. Uh, I took a big L on this one. And I want to share with you guys because it's a good learning experience. And maybe it will give you guys some insight on this uh, particular subject on eBay. So what this is, is a junk drawer lot. Okay, this has been uh, popular on eBay for many, many years now. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. If you've never heard of that before, the idea is that you take a junk drawer and you just sell everything together. All right, it's stuff that you may not care about. That's why it's originally a junk drawer, but maybe someone else sees a treasure or two in there and just watch your junk. It goes on the old principle that one man's garbage is another man's treasure, right? So uh, years and years and years ago, when eBay was new and fresh, it was basically a giant garage sale, and good, honest people just sold random stuff to make some money. That's just how it worked, right? And at some point, probably a long time ago, uh, all the scam artists came in there, and all the, the people looking to just you know make a buck, they showed up and kind of ruined things like they usually do, um, and uh, it just turned into a big question mark. You know, there's a lot of stuff on eBay that seems like scams, like. Particularly if you're looking at, let's say, precious metals like gold and silver, you have to be very careful because there's a lot of uh, deceitful, you know, listings and you really have to read every word and really know what you're buying. A lot of people end up buying stuff on eBay and uh, they just don't get what they expected. Now, sometimes you get a refund, sometimes you don't. Just one of those things. But it's just you have to take everything with a grain of salt and you really have to know what you're looking at, right? So uh, the whole junk drawer lot thing... Um, this, this came about years and years ago. I was always interested. It was always a fascinating thought. And the idea was that like, you know, maybe you have a family member passed away, maybe a grandmother or grandfather, you don't know what to do with their stuff, you know? So you just like group it all together and you sell it on eBay. You don't know what you're looking at. Maybe you got some like old random coins. You're not into coins. You don't know what they're worth. Maybe you got an old, uh, tie collection or something. No idea what it's worth. So the concept is you throw it on eBay and whatever its value is, you can have millions of people look at it or at least thousands, maybe hundreds, who knows, but anyone searching for that kind of stuff, they're going to find it, they're going to see value in there, and you're going to get a pretty decent price for what it's actually worth. That's the idea. When you put it out in public, for a lot of people to see, if there's actual value there, it does sell. Take, for example, silver. Silver is a fantastic example, because if you put a piece of silver on eBay, let's say you have one silver eagle, and you know you're going to get at least 20 bucks for it, it'll never sell for five bucks because there's always people looking at it and there's always going to be people who know there's value now specifically buying silver and you know maybe some smaller increments of gold on ebay um you know it is a little tricky but you, you generally don't get a great price because of that everyone's looking all the time 24 7 all around the world so it's not like someone's just going to miss it oh it's on there for five bucks it's worth a hundred dollars maybe i'll get it for five bucks and eh. Probably not, because there's thousands of other people looking at it, and they're thinking the same thing. So, generally speaking, not always the case. Sometimes things slip through the cracks, and that's where people get lucky. Um, but if there's something of value, and it's on there as an actual auction, not a buy it now, but a regular auction, generally people will bid for what it's worth. And sometimes they'll bid more than what it's worth, which is what I happen to do in this case. So getting back to uh, this particular lot, I've been looking at these uh, junk drawer lots for a while now, and I'm really focusing on knife stuff, you know, things that I know about. You know, I know about knives, I know about like Zippo lighters and stuff, so occasionally you'll see a thing where it's literally a bunch of junk, and there's like one maybe Zippo from 1948 or something, you know, and it's selling for 10 bucks. You figure, well, the Zippo's worth 10 bucks, so why not? That's the idea. I might, I've actually saw uh, one particular lot where it was a bunch of crap. It was serious, like like really garbage, you know, nothing of value to anyone. However, there was a Leatherman Wave mixed in, just in the background. I thought, wow, cool, Leatherman Wave. And it was bidding at like 15 bucks. And I thought, well, you know, I'd buy a Leatherman Wave for 15 bucks all day long. And then it got to 20, and then 30, and then 50. And it's like, all right, well, you know, someone else spotted the Wave, obviously. So that's an auction that, that kind of came and went. And there was a couple here and there that were like that. There was a, a certain amount of value, whether it was a, a knife that I knew about or multiple knives or Zippos, or anything else that I, I have a fascination with, or a collection. So I've been, you know, scrolling through, and I finally found this lot, and this lot had very, very low bids on it. It was basically a bunch of jewelry, and in the middle of the picture, there was a watch. Now there's a couple little random watches here, um, but there was a watch in the middle that really caught my eye. And uh, let me see if you can see what I'm talking about here. 
This is a picture of uh, the exact auction. This is what I was looking at. And I was looking around to see if there's any value in this particular uh, lot. And uh, I spotted the watch, which you're probably looking at right now as well. It is right in the middle. It is a gold Omega watch, a vintage, probably maybe 70s-ish. And uh, that caught my eye, all right? So the rest of the stuff in here was almost like a bonus. My focus really was on that watch. Now, a genuine Omega watch, this is like a smaller watch as well, especially if you compare it to some of the other ones that were in the pictures here. Um, it, it's probably a woman's watch because it's very small. But genuine Omega watches in the 70s type era, I mean, 18 karat gold bands and, and um, cases and stuff, I mean, they sell for two, three thousand dollars you know, so that was, that's what really kind of stood out to me. And I thought, wow, you know, if this is real, um, that's a heck of a find, you know, especially if I get this for the price I wanted to, I wanted to pay a hundred bucks. I'll tell you, I paid more than a hundred bucks. Um, but I thought to myself, the logic was, well, even if the watch is fake, there's other stuff in this lot. That's kind of cool. You know, there's a bunch of random jewelry. Maybe there's some silver in there. Maybe there's some gold in there, you know, um, so it was fascinating to me. I thought, you know, why not? Why not take a stab in the dark? Now, this is me going off the beaten path because when I'm on eBay, if I'm buying stuff, it's because I know I'm getting a deal. You know, there's certain knives, older knives that are discontinued that someone's selling because they don't care about and they're selling for, you know, 15, 20 bucks or something. And I know it's worth 100 bucks. That's the kind of stuff I bid on. And uh, once in a while, I get lucky and I get something like that. And I get to, you know, add to my collection on the cheap or, you know, get to uh, flip it, you know, and sell it or use it for a trade item or something. So that's usually what I'm doing. And I have to say, I'm very proud of myself. I do my research and everything. So I have a pretty good track record. You know, I got some, some uh, uh, you know, wins under my belt, but this was definitely a loss. This was me going off the beaten path and, and doing something I wasn't really familiar with. And I probably should have been tipped off uh, that the, you know, there's an Omega watch. I mean, it's a gold watch. It might as well be a Rolex right in the middle there, just placed ever so slightly peaking so you can see what it is, you know? I, it should have been, a red flag to me, honestly. Um, but I took a chance. I took a chance and crapped my pants. <laughs> did, you ever, did you ever see the uh, the bathroom poems? I mean, it doesn't say crap, it's the S word, but I'm trying to keep this family friendly. But yeah, yesterday I took a chance, tried to fart, but crapped my pants. And what was the other one? Um, I sit here now brokenhearted, tried to crap, but only farted. Yeah, that's some good entertainment right there where you're sitting in the public bathroom. But anyway, uh, that's what happened. I, uh, I kind of just, I lost this one. Now, even though I have the watch here, it's in the back, and I know you guys are like, come on, show the stuff, show the stuff. Well, I'm telling the story here. I'm gonna show you everything that came here, not every single piece, but I'll give you an idea of what it came with. But just understand that that was my focus, is that Omega watch. I'm like, man, if that watch is real, this is a heck of a find. But even if it's fake, there's some cool stuff in here. There's some interesting, you know, lapel pins. I wasn't really specifically interested in that. But I was looking at the jewelry. I'm thinking, well, maybe there's, you know, the value in silver or gold or whatever I can add to my collection. Now, I will tell you that there was solid gold in this lot. I'm keeping that separate for another video, which you'll probably see soon after this one. But yes, this did come with gold. It was in the title, gold, watches, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and there was gold in here, but it was a surprising amount, shocking amount of gold. Um, so you'll see that in a separate video. Just keep that in mind though. And it's another reason why I think that this was set up. You know, when I first clicked on this thing, I was looking at the person's other stuff for sale and it was random stuff like clothes and stuff. So the idea in my head that I was blinded by is that, well, this is not a scam or anything. You know, this wasn't place like this, this is just someone passed away and they're selling their stuff and they don't know that they have this, you know, two or $3,000 gold watch. Well, I was had. Uh, I wouldn't call it a scam because they were very, very specific with their words and stuff and the way they did this. And by the way, the gold that was in here was not pictured. The picture you just saw before, you can't see the actual gold that's underneath and for a very specific reason. Because if I saw that, I would have known to stay away from this lot. But at the end of the day, what I paid for this, I think there was a, I think the value is somewhat here. It might not be as much, but it really just kind of depends. So let me get into what's actually in here. All right. So this was in the back. Okay. In the back of this uh, kind of, you know, old box here, jewelry box, whatever. And this is actually pretty cool. It doesn't have any current value, but this is a stock certificate for American Telephone and Telegraph Company. 
If you don't know what that is, if you're young watching, that is AT&T stock. Now we know AT&T is a very successful company. This stock uh, um, was sold in 1964, June 1st, 1964, which is kind of cool because you guys know I love silver and everything. And 1964 was the last year that we actually had silver in our US currency. And when the price of silver surpassed what it's actually uh, portraying, like for example, if you don't know what I'm talking about, like a 1964 quarter was 90% pure silver. Now, a 1964 quarter was worth 25 cents in America. But in 1965, that silver that was in the quarter was worth more than 25 cents worth of silver. So they stopped doing it. That's basically how that works. So they got rid of silver in our actual money. So our money was just pretend cheap little metal. Um, but anyway, this stock certificate is super cool. This was for 117 shares of AT&T stock in 1964, which today would be worth probably a couple thousand dollars, nothing like extreme or anything. Uh, however, if you notice these uh, punch holes in here, this was a, a used uh, uh, certificate. So basically this is not something I can cash in. It was already cashed in, but it's a very cool piece of history and it smells like someone's attic. <laughs> I don't know, I kind of like the smell of some uh, old stuff. Uh, but it's, it's fascinating. It's a little piece of history and I'll probably frame this because I do have stocks. I love the stock market. I love gold and silver and all that kind of stuff. So it's interesting. It's not worth anything. It's probably literally worth like $10 or something as a collectible. Um, but I think it's a, it's a cool piece. So anyway, this is the, the back. You see all the, the details on here for the stock certificate. But, uh, but yeah, that is the first thing that I actually saw was on the back in one of the other uh, pictures. I thought, oh, that's pretty cool but you can't obviously cash in or anything. So then we have, I kind of separated this into a couple different things. This is the interesting stuff we'll keep for last. First, there was a bunch of costume jewelry. Costume jewelry is pieces that don't have any precious metals in it. Um, the thing is, and I'm, gonna, I'm keeping this separate because there's an antique guy that I'm gonna go to who I know deals specifically with costume jewelry. Some costume jewelry, is worth thousands and thousands of dollars. Vintage stuff. I'm not talking about going down to Walmart and buying a fake ring right now. You're not gonna get any money for that. Now the thing with costume jewelry is it has to be, you know, a specific time period, specific makers. You know, even without any kind of markings, you know, the collectors out there, they know certain pieces by certain people. So even though there's no actual precious metals, there's no real silver or real real gold, uh, there's not even real, you know, gems or diamonds or anything like that. But sometimes they're worth literally thousands and thousands of dollars because people collect that kind of stuff. So for me, it's completely a question mark. I don't know anything about costume jewelry except the fact that some of it is worth a lot of money. So this will go to an antiques dealer who, uh, who knows about this kind of stuff a little bit more. And maybe they pick out a couple pieces, maybe get five, 10 bucks here and there, something like that. I'm not expecting to get, you know, a $50,000 piece of costume jewelry out of this, but you just never know, you know? So that'll get set aside and brought to an antique place in the future. Now, besides that, we also had some military stuff in here. So let me, let me stop for one second. This whole lot, okay, this lot was actually someone's stuff. I believe it was a couple and it was a man and a woman based on what I see that's in here. Um, but whoever had this kind of stuff, I don't know if they got it from an estate sale or whatever, they threw in a couple stupid things like this. Like, what is this? Fake money? It's huge. This was just printed on someone's, like, you know, regular computer. They just printed these out, cut them up. They wrote copy on the back, all right? I had a stamp with copy, so God forbid you go to the store and try to use this, you know? You wouldn't want to fool anyone. Oh man, I thought this was a hundred bucks until I flipped it over. Good thing I had copy on there. Like this is dumb. This is dumb stuff. This wasn't even cool if I was eight years old. Who cares, right? Um, but everything else in here is genuine. This is vintage. There are actual vintage pins. Uh, there's some medallions here, some watches and stuff. Um, there's a knife in here. The knife is actually from the 90s, which I guess is, I don't know, that's not really vintage yet. Um, but this is real stuff. It's not like a bunch of Chinese random stuff. Uh, however, I do feel like the seller, by throwing this in here, if I saw these on top, I would not have purchased this. If I saw the actual gold that was in here, which again, you'll see in another video, I would have not have bid on this stuff. Uh, but like I said, the watch was just placed ever so like purposely. It was purposely put there like a, you know, where's Waldo type thing for someone like me to go, wow, that's worth a lot of money. I want that. And it's not, unfortunately. So anyway, besides the costume jewelry, there's uh, a bunch of lapel pins. This is all 
military related stuff. It seems like the, the owner of these was in the Air Force. There's a lot of Air Force pins, a lot of um, you know military related stuff here, as well as space stuff. There's some commemorative uh, Space Shuttle Apollo 11 pins and stuff. I don't collect lapel pins uh, or you know regular pins like this. Um, this may have value to someone else, you know, who obviously collects them. There are besides the military ones that are in here, and there are like ones commemorating nice things too, like the bicentennial for the Statue of Liberty and you know, again, you know, Apollo 11 and some other space shuttle stuff. And, you know, if you're into pins, that would be really cool. Unfortunately, I am not a pin collector. Besides that, there's also pins pertaining to uh, the Freemasons, which is kind of cool. My grandfather's a Freemason. Actually, he's a Shriner, uh, heavily involved with, uh, with both of those. Um, big philanthropist, put a lot of his time and a lot of his money uh, back into society, which I think is pretty cool. That's why I take the, uh, you know, Kentucky colonelship, uh, you know, pretty serious. I like to give back to uh, society. That's the whole point of it is philanthropy. But uh, just a couple things there. Um, like there's a little patch here. I think this is the Fez hat for the uh, Shriners. There's also some golf stuff in here. Um, some regular PGA as well as the women's PGA. Which is, what is that? The, I forget. Let's see. I have one of these pins. I forget what it's called. I don't think it's just W... PGA is something else. But anyway, the Women's Golf League, LPGA. Yeah, there you go. So, Ladies uh, Professional Golf Association, perhaps? But anyway, some random pins like that. There's also these uh, medallions. These are from like the 70s for different uh, hotels. Here's the Sands Hotel in Vegas, right? Caesars Palace, uh, the Dunes Hotel, which is not even there anymore. I don't know if Sands is there. I don't think they are. Um, here's another Caesars Palace. This one's kind of cool. This one is uh, talking about Sinatra uh, playing in uh, in Vegas, right? And these are for like the 70s. So, I mean, these are kind of cool. The, maybe someone collects these. I have no idea. I don't even know if the, you know, where these came from. Were these medallions given to certain VIPs or something? Aware? I have no idea. Um, so that that's, again, a total mystery to me. I don't think there's much value there. Uh, like collectively, when you got things, that, okay, this is five bucks, this is five bucks, this is 10 bucks, this is 20 bucks. Yeah, maybe I got the value out of it, but it's stuff I would never have purchased otherwise. I was super focused on the uh, the watches and, uh, you know, the knife and, and things like that. But anyway, besides that, this is also... Oh, here we go. See, Apollo 11. There's a... Buy American. There's a local UHW. Um, airborne uh, patch. So, you know, there's some interesting things in here. There's a bunch of, again, a bunch of Air Force stuff, a lot of military stuff in here as well. Uh, here's a here's a uh, sticker, a decal, this person bought at some point and never used. Looks like they paid a dollar for it, maybe at a garage sale or something, I don't know. Hawkeye, which again, I have no idea. I don't know the, uh, um, the story behind that, what that represents. So here's the focus. <laughs> let, me get to, let me get to the stuff that I do know a little bit. So here's the focus, so here's the watch. Okay, the watch that caught my eye, all right? So this is a woman's Omega watch. Well, it's not Omega, it's fake, all right? But in the picture, it was like this sideways. I could, I, the first thing that caught my eye was that Omega logo that like, you know, it looks like a horseshoe, but it's obviously Omega sign. But I thought that was really cool. And then you could see it says Omega. And even though the, the picture was quite blurry, you know, it's covered up like this, and I'm looking at the band and the band style with these very small links. It definitely screamed like 60s or 70s. I thought, man, that is cool. If that is real, that is a heck of a steal. But even if it's fake, I was still, in my mind, I'm still thinking like, yeah, even if it's fake, there's some other stuff here that's kind of cool. I took a shot in the dark, and uh, I do think I missed. Now, when I, when I first opened this, obviously I was very excited to see if it was real, and there was multiple things that told me it was fake right off the bat. So... Maybe to the untrained eye, this looks like a real watch. In the picture, I thought it was real. But uh, the first tip-off is the actual logo and the words that are on the face here. Uh, every single Omega watch, it would be an actual separate piece of metal. Okay, and it's hard to tell maybe from this angle, but it is not a separate piece of metal. It's actually um, painted on inside. It's just black. Okay, normally that would be little, you know, uh, you know gold emblems that are, that are glued in there. Also, if you look on the inside of the face, there's like some wearing or some rubs or something. I, how would that even happen? <laughs> you know what I mean? There's 
there's a case front. So how would that, it looks like glue marks or something. But the, the first tip off when I first took it out of the package, I don't know if you guys can tell, but down here is not gold. Where it, this was actually worn probably by a woman who maybe passed away or maybe just sold her stuff or whatever. But it uh, might be hard to tell if I'm close like this. But here's gold color and this is all silver. So on the, this would be obviously on the bottom of the wrist. So as it rubbed on things, it wore away the fake gold. Um, Omega watches, as far as I know, they use solid 18 karat gold. They don't use gold plate. So it just, if you see silver like that, any kind of wear, it just, it would be fake, completely fake. There are markings on here, but the markings are also fake. So it's 18 uh, karat, um, 0750 or 750 is also 18 karat, which is, means the same thing. And there's some, you know, some generic Omega logos on there or stampings on there. But the other tip off, of course, is looking at the markings on the back of the case. Might be hard to tell here, but it is very poorly done. Okay, Swiss made in the bottom is barely even legible. So this was just like a, a, a stamp, you know what I mean? They have some kind of fake counterfeit stamp and they just poof, on the back of the watch. So that's really uh, unfortunate. So yeah, I mean, this is definitely a counterfeit. It's a counterfeit Omega watch. So I don't know what I'm doing with it now. It's not worth anything. Um, unless you want to fake like you have an Omega watch, but you don't, but it's kind of silly. Uh, I never, like I said, I mean, copies of things are one thing. If you have a similar design, there's a million different legitimate nice watches that kind of look like Rolexes, but they're not fake Rolexes. They're just the Rolex style. So right off the bat, the watch was a bust. Now in the picture, I did also notice the Parker box for the pen and that turned out to be real. Now, even though this is a very old box, I don't know if the pen itself is as old as the box. It could be a newer pen, but it is new and it is genuinely Parker, which makes nice uh, quality pens. All right. The insert is dried up, of course, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a nice pen. I'll certainly use it. But again, I mean, even though I have a pen collection, I don't specifically collect vintage pens, so I don't really know its value. If I had to guess, maybe 10, 15 bucks, who knows? Something like that, I don't think it's uh, surpassing that, really. So the pen was also something I can actually use. Um, this was interesting, I have no idea what this is. If you happen to know what this is, please post it in the comment section. Um, this is solid brass, it has a knurled bottom here. All right, so there's a cavity in there. So I don't know what's supposed to go in there. Um, but then we have this interesting tip. It looks like some kind of a tool. I'm not sure if maybe there were bits that were originally in here or something. But then here's the, the tip of this, what appears to be a tool. I have no idea what this is. It is solid brass. So if you have a, an idea what that could possibly be, please let me know. I'd, I'd love to know. Uh, but that's interesting, so I'll hang on to that. This I didn't even see. This is an old adjustable wrench, um, and it has a patent on here for October 18th, 18, 1898. Uh, it's, a, it's a functional wrench, <laughs> so I'll, I'll keep this. I kind of like old tools. So that's kind of cool. Don't know its value. Maybe five bucks, maybe 10 bucks, 20 bucks, who knows? All right, so next up, we have a couple watches here. All right, let's take all these out. So this looked nice in the picture. This looks like a, like a pilot's watch or something. All right, but this is, come on, focus. This is just a cheap little made in China watch. All right, so I mean, I like the style. I wish it was a, a quality watch. I would have actually used it. Then we have this Citizen watch, which looks legit, uh, but these could probably be purchased for 80 bucks, 100 bucks brand new. This one's pretty busted. It's got cracked. Um, front here on the side there it's just really beat the crap of course the battery is dead in that one then we have this uh, Britannia watch which also looks legit but these aren't super expensive either um, I'd like to maybe fix this put a battery in or something it's cool because it has the moon phases all right of course it has a date kind of interesting looking watch um, and then we have a, a pocket watch this is made by Majestime which uh, has a little bit of value, not much. Again, under a hundred bucks, probably uh, more like the you know forty or fifty dollar price range. I get that to focus for you. There we go. And what is kind of cool though is that 
I also have a bunch of pocket watch chains. There's a couple of different styles here. I'm not going to go over everything, make this a really long video, but it's just kind of cool. So if I wanted to use this as a pocket watch, this nice as a little pocket clip. All right, there's no style there that goes through the uh, button on a vest or something. You can clip it on the back. So kind of cool, interesting. Also some old bottle openers, all right, from Schmitz, all right, Philadelphia. Kind of cool. Brewing uh, since 1860. And then we have the other old style, which I've uh, had a couple of these as well. Same thing, Schmitz. Then we have a nail tool, which I will actually use. This one's advertising Hunter, Hunter Blended Whiskey, 86 proof, 65% grain neutral spirits. Hunter Distilling Co. in Louisville, Kentucky. So yeah, Hunter, first over the bars. So I actually use these. I've shown these before. It's a perfect little nail tool. This is great to get in there and clean your fingernails. And then it has a big old, um, or I should say it's a, it's a fat body, but it has a small flathead in there and a little bottle opener. But I really just use it for the nail tool. So that'll actually get used. Then we have the knife, the only knife that was in this lot. All right. This is actually, like I said, from the nine, I think the mid 90s. But this is a Camelus. This is called the Yellow Jacket. All right. It's a model 710. So pretty cool. I mean, it's a it's a totally functional little knife. This actually has a little bit of value, more like twenty or thirty bucks. Um, unfortunately, there's a very small crack in the middle uh, pin there. Not a huge deal, but this will go in the collection. I'll just always remember this a lot, so I'll have this uh, this knife. So yeah, that was the only actual knife in this lot. Then this jewelry here. I'm not going to go through all of it, but this all does have gold content. This is all 14 karat. Uh, or actually two of these I think are 18 karat, but these are gold filled, okay? So it's not solid uh, 18 karat gold. Uh, I'll have to research these a little bit more. There's a nice little locket, a heart locket. Um, so yeah, I mean, this probably has some value as well. I'm not sure exact, I didn't really look into it as of yet. But there is gold content in there besides the actual solid piece of gold that was sent. Um, and that pretty much concludes it. I mean, there, like I said, there's a couple of miscellaneous things here and there, but that's generally what was in this lot. And you saw the picture, it was all just kind of mixed in. What I was hoping for, so I was obviously hoping that the watch was real, but I knew that was kind of a shot in the dark. Um, but I was hoping that, you know, more rings and things were, uh, you know, silver and things like that. There's actually no silver in this entire lot. But, uh, but who knows? Who knows what the costume jewelry is worth? Who knows what some of these pins, you know, are worth sometimes? you know, what looks to be junk is actually uh, valuable to someone else. You know, it, it doesn't, just because I have a ton of hobbies doesn't mean that I'm oblivious to that. Like I said, one of these lapel pins that means nothing to me might be worth something to someone else. You know, whereas I'm focused on the knives and the tools and, you know, I do like watches, but I don't know a whole lot about watches, you know. Um, I just know that Omega is a fantastic brand and people are always looking for the vintage stuff. So that's why this, uh, this lot got my attention. Um, I do feel like it was set up Specifically because of the dumb stuff that was added to the uh, the lot here. Um, you know, the gold, as I mentioned before, was not visible at all. The actual piece of gold. And again, if I saw it, which you will see in a separate video. And in that video, I'll tell you what I paid for this eBay lot. Just so you know, because I know you're curious. What do you pay for all this junk? Well, uh, I paid more than I wanted to. I got into a little bit of a bidding war uh, with someone else. There's actually three people bidding, but um, one of them dropped off kind of early. So it was basically me and someone else. And we went back and forth and... You know, I ended up winning. Um, kind of wish I didn't. So that's pretty much it. Like I said, there's a couple odds and ends here and there. But, you know, you guys got the gist of it. It was a bunch of pins. It was a, a couple watches. A um, couple random things. This just looks like someone's, you know, jewelry box. A couple, you know, who uh, obviously the woman wore. Because this is worn. This is used. So she wore uh, a fake Omega watch. And uh, the guy was either, you know, in the, uh, the Air Force or had a fascination with it. Also had a fascination with uh, space, uh, possibly a Mason, a Freemason. Um, it just, it, it paints an interesting picture. I'm not, I'm not sure if the stock was originally that person's stock because it was pinned to the back of this uh, jewelry box. And it's very possible. It's very possible that the original owner, you know, they had this stock and this was their valuables, you know, but who knows if this stuff actually was for the same person or couple. You know, I kind of feel like at this point, the seller uh, probably had, I would, I would imagine maybe they buy estate sales, 
you know, and they sell the stuff that's worth money, and then the stuff they don't think is worth money, maybe they put together in these little lots like this, and they sell them as a junk drawer lot, you know. Maybe the person who had these uh, golf pins is not even the same person who had, you know, the Apollo uh, pins. Anyway, that's it for now, guys. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. I will do a video uh, again on the, uh, the chunk of gold that they sent, as well as how much I paid for it. So that's all for now. Hopefully you guys have a fantastic day, and I'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.